Crossroads. Each Crossroads story is based on the actual experiences of American clergymen, pastor, priest, or rabbi, the men who give inspiration and guidance to people at the crossroads of life. And now, for our story. Solomon University, Presbyterian Mission School in the Philippines. Headed by missionary Dr. Roe Bell and his wife, Edna. Here, the American and Filipino teachers brought the light of learning and the love of God to the youth of the Philippines. 1942 came the end of this great work with the advance of the Japanese fighter planes and troops. Then on May 22, 1942, we find Dr. Roy Bell and his small band of teachers gathered in a classroom. Officers and men and civilian personnel of the United States Armed Forces of the Far East. The commanding officer of the American forces of Negros has surrendered this command to the Japanese forces as of this date and directs all American military units to cease fire and to capitulate according to the terms of the surrender. So, it is the end. If Solomon were just a group of stone and brick buildings, this could be the end. It could be reduced to dust and obliterated, but we know that it's more than that. We know that its true being is in the hearts and ideals of countless young Filipino men and women, Philippine youths, who learned here the true meaning of freedom and equality and love of the Philippines. Amen. Now in our hour of disaster, our work as teachers is not finished. Now we must teach with our own example, the truth of what we've been teaching out of books and with words, that freedom, like eternal truth, even though it be crushed to ashes, shall rise again. We must prove by our own example that those who dare to be free and will fight to be free shall never be enslaved. All right, boys, hold up the flags. I still wonder if it wouldn't be better for us to remain together, rather than to separate like this in small family groups. No. I feel sure that our strength and our safety lies not in union, but in separation. Yeah. Edna and I and the boys intend to make for the hills and back of Malibu. You all have your places of refuge. When we are established, we must contact one another by means of runners. Now. I know of no better farewell or prayer for all, all of us than may the Lord watch over thee and me while we are absent one from the other. Amen. Amen. At the end of a secret mountain trail known only to the natives, Bell and his party found an abandoned hut. This was their first headquarters. Hi, Dad. Hello, Dad. There you are, boys. The Bell country residence in the jungle. Magnificent view of the whole island of Oriental Negros. And running water. <laughs> you boys can take turns running it up from the spring. You think the Japs will find us here? Well, not right away. But 
Sometimes. Mm, perhaps sometimes. What'll we do then? We'll find another place to hide. Is that all we're going to be doing on the rest of our lives? Hiding? Well, we'll hope not. Now look, you guys keep your eyes open. I'm going to go see how your mother's doing in the counterintelligence department. Oh, Roy. Don't sneak up on me like that. I'm skittish. See anything? Yes. Looks like Japs. Right down there. What do you think? Well, there aren't enough of them to make a very thorough search. Roy, how long do you think we'll have to stay here? You scared? Uh-huh. Petrified. <laughs> You're quite a gal, Mrs. Bell. <laughs> Professor Roy Bell. Where is his family and him hiding? We have information that the teachers and students of this university were told not to surrender, to resist the order, to hide themselves. Answer me! Did Bell persuade the teacher to disobey surrender order? Did he not? Which means more to you, Bell, or your life? Throw him in a stockade. In a few days, he will talk. You know, that's great. Better than anything you ever turned out at art class in the university. Confucius says, one picture better than a thousand words. <laughs> Roy, <laughs> you think the symbol of the Liberty Bell will get over? Do you think they'll understand the connection with your name? Can you think of anything better? No, I can't. <laughs> Neither can I. I think the boys have turned out a very powerful piece of counter-propaganda. It worries me, though. Having your name even remotely connected with violence. Yeah, I'm not up here to shoot anyone. I've got my hands full coordinating the problems of the civilian evacuees. But, Roy... You'll be careful. Promise me, Roy, you'll be careful. Yeah, Dad. Don't try to be too big of a hero, will you, Dad? Look, you guys. I'll take care of my department. You just take care of your mother. You runners will be our eyes and our ears, our only line of communication. We must coordinate the local governments in the hills and get them working and functioning together. We must get medicine and food distributed among the people. Now, to do this, we must know minute to minute, just where the Japs are patrolling. Any questions? No. Kivaya Kandayif. May you walk with God. Smith. He has. I came from Roy Bell. He is at Malibu. I am to stay with you here. We are to keep an eye on all Jap movements in this area. Good. Welcome to Malibu, gentlemen. <laughs> Sir? 
Your old ROTC unit reporting for duty. Good work, Rudy. Rappel. <laughs> Welcome, boys. But you know we almost missed you. There's a pitfall just a little bit further down the trail, big enough to hold a whole Japanese patrol. The boys dug it to discourage unwelcome visitors. Of what fleet after the glorious victory of Pearl Harbor and the saturation bombing of San Francisco, Los Angeles, Detroit, and New York by the Japanese Air Force, Roosevelt has decided everything beyond the Pacific coast of the United States must be abandoned. Oh, oh if we only knew the truth. That's what propaganda is for. To break down the will to resist. Not our will. Fight. Hit them. Keep hitting them. Well, it's not within my province to advise you on military things. You army boys know what to do better than I could tell you. The enemy's trying to make it sound as if resistance on our part would seem almost ridiculous. Perhaps to some it seemed almost ridiculous for David to believe that he could resist Goliath. And if you'll remember, it was among the hills of Mount Gilead that Gideon mustered his immortal 300. And against hundreds of times their number, won a victory. And right here, in our mountains of Malabo, we're going to win a victory. help we'll carry on. Smuggling the press and those type cases out of the university before the Japs moved in was a real master stroke, Emmanuel. At least there is freedom of the press in one part of the Philippines. Our press. <laughs> Commanding officer, Imperial Japanese Liberation Forces will pay 100,000 pesos reward for information leading to the capture of Professor Roy Bell. Hey, they've raised the price. You're getting to be worth an awful lot of money, Dad. Yeah, I seem to be in a rising market. <laughs> Attention, this is the voice of the Imperial Japanese Forces for Philippine Liberation. The voices of the Philippine Liberation. 
Today, a great celebration is taking place in the streets of Tokyo and in every city and hamlet in Japan. The war is over. Lies, of course. Only we could find out what is really happening. I've dodged enemy patrols for a hundred miles of jungle to find you. My prized pupil, Captain Louis Vale, chief radio operator, United States Forces. Five years ago, I taught him physics and football at Silliman. <laughs> <laughs> Our greatest handicap is that we have no communication with the outside world. No way of letting them know the truth of what is happening here and all over the islands. They probably do think that everyone in the islands has surrendered. Well, that's going to be my department. What? I've got a complete set of radio equipment hidden in a cave about a hundred miles from here. In perfect condition. But a hundred miles of jungle. Infested with Japs. Well, what would you need to get it? How many men? Well, a small truck, if possible. Or a jeep. Otherwise, the equipment would have to be divided to make uh, carrying easier. The men lugging it would have to move fast, night and day, through jungle country. Can do. Can do. <laughs> Take it easy with that generator now, boys. That's the most important thing. Enemy plane, watch out. Take cover. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. They nearly went our radio equipment. Say nothing of two weeks of tough going to get here. And three weeks of tougher going to get back. Okay, men, climb aboard. That's all. Now we'll head straight through the jungle trails to the coast. From there on in, we'll travel by night. And take it easy, Rafael. This equipment's delicate. Don't worry. So am I. And so the long trek began. Mile after mile of treacherous jungle with its fetid heat, prowling beasts and slimy reptiles. Man-killing insects swarmed around them. Moss-covered quicksand sucked at their wheels. And ever-present was the greatest menace of all, the Japs. By day, the boys hid beneath the dripping foliage, a prey to jungle fever and fighting off the temptation to quench their burning thirst with poisoned water. And by night, they followed half-obliterated trails with only the moon and stars for headlights. But they steadily moved forward, for their goal was liberty. And freedom was their beacon. What, again? I better take a look at it. What's wrong with it this time? Hold it. How about it? That's uh, a dead duck. Dry as a bone. The rear main bearing is gone. Any spare parts? Yes, being stirring the whole motor apart. Well, let's get at it. We've only got about three hours till daylight. Right. Hey, what was that? It's an observation tower on the hill. Come on, let's get it in this motor. Okay. Ah, we won't have to wait until daylight. The Japs have already spotted us. Unload right here, men. We'll take it on foot from now on. Come on, come on, step on it. They'll be here in a matter of minutes. Come on, quick. below, emerging from the jungle, were a group of tiny figures. It could be. It was. They made it. 
fish here. Here we are, right on schedule. Almost home. Louis, Raphael, thank God you're here. Don't tell me you had to make it on foot. For the last four days, we had to leave our jeep with the Japs. Well, I'm proud of you. I don't know how you managed it. We'll get an early start to headquarters in the morning. How far is it? About eight miles up the mountain. Well, what's the matter with getting started right now? Well, you're all, all in. You need a good night's rest. Oh, what do you say, boys? Real coffee for breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. This'll be a day that Silliman University will never forget. Let's go. salvation and in the name of our God raise our banners. Some believe in chariots, some in horses. We will remember the name of the Lord, our God. The generator is putting out at full capacity. Everything checks on the transmitter. Long way to Australia. Yes, even by short wave. The voice they hear for the first time should be yours, if they hear it. No, they might not hear any voice if it hadn't been for you. Okay. Here goes. This is the headquarters of the Philippine Resistance Forces on the island of Negros. Calling the headquarters of General Douglas MacArthur. Come in, Australia. Come in, Yusofi headquarters. This is the headquarters of the Philippine Resistance Forces. This is Yusafi headquarters, Australia. Go ahead, Negros. Do you read me? We've been trying to contact you for six months. General MacArthur urgently needs information as to your activities. What is your situation and the strength of your forces? What munitions and supplies can you use? This is Roy Bell on Negros. Convey to your command that the military forces here would appreciate supplies, arms, munitions, Tell the general that we'll be here to welcome him on his return. So contact has been established. Not by Roy Bell alone, by no means. By many men, Filipinos, Americans, working together in common brotherhood. Roy. What has been done has been done by faith, of faith alone. I shall raise mine eyes up unto the hill. Stories for Crossroads are selected by our board of advisors, Captain Maurice M. Witherspoon, Father George B. Ford, and Dr. William F. Rosenblum.